My company is focused. My company is focused on enterprise mobility. So, over the last decade, there has been an enormous transformation around enterprise mobility. Enterprise mobility was synonymous with BlackBerry, and its function was just email and uh, brick breaker. <laughs> <laughs> But 10 years later, with billions of iOS and Android devices, enterprise mobility is about productivity beyond email. And it's all about apps. So, unlike the BlackBerry days though, the iPhone, iPads, and Android devices are owned by, they're not owned by the enterprise, they're owned by the people. And business users are using all those <coughs> thousands of productivity apps for business without any regard for security. This would be like you know, apps like Evernote, Dropbox, and obviously this has created an enormous enterprise security and <laughs> data leakage. So the current solutions that people are using are like the MDM solutions this would be, don't fit this, the, the, the problem because they're only trying to control the device and they have no visibility into <coughs> the applications which the data reside in. So, the current approach is, first they try to gain control over the, the device using MDM, but that's very easy to bypass and it doesn't have visibility to the apps. Then, people started using blacklisting, whitelisting, but that doesn't work because Let's say you blacklist Dropbox, but there are like a thousand other applications that use the Dropbox API and that do the same exact thing. So you would not be able to blacklist and whitelist uh, apps. And obviously the nuclear op option of wiping a device remotely creates enormous of like, you know, collateral damage, plus it, doesn't as, it, it also doesn't get the objective of the uh, done because if the device is not connected, the data could still be exfiltrated out of there. So, the existing solutions try to address this problem by saying, let's go and partner with each app developer and create security and control around uh, for the application. So, all of those vendors, good, IBM, they've, put, I mean, last week I counted it and it was around 107 applications, these are mostly you know, SharePoint and uh, uh, other productivity applications that they've been able to secure. But this is in the context of 2 million apps that are out there. So this obviously doesn't address the problem. So our technology is around being able to secure any app, <coughs> be it native app, be it you get it from the app store, it doesn't matter. We're able to apply security and visibility into uh, uh, for the enterprise. So, what our, our approach is very simple. You select any app, then you analyze it for, based on the behaviors for what kind of risk and what kind of things it does. And then you basically secure it and you're able to use it in a fortified workspace. So that's the process that, uh, that uh, we've created. So let me uh, show you a demo first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, play the role of enterprise IT and create a policy and then add an application from the app store directly and be able to add security controls into it and then I'll go into the device as an end user be able to use that application that's been secured and uh, uh, by the enterprise again if the enterprise user wants to secure an application himself you will be able to also select whatever app you downloaded and be able to actually add security control. <coughs> so, first I'm going to go to our uh, console. So, so this is the better uh, admin console. So, the IT administrator would go into this console and first
today. Just close it. So all of the Logan uh, into the Enterprise Admin Console. <coughs> Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go create a policy for in, a, in how I'm going to control the apps. So I'm going to go to the policy, and I'm going to create, I'm going to add an app policy. So here we have granular level of controls in how the application should behave. And so the first set is around authentication. So if the app needs authentication and against any identity source. It could be your Active Directory in the enterprise, it could be Google Apps, whatever the source of the identity is. Then, usage policies of geofencing, for example. You want an application to only work in a certain area. So, you would come in and you would create a geofence. So, like, let's say you go into the 42nd Street. So, and you could be able to draw what the geofence should be. So I could say, mm -hmm. I just want the application to only work in this area. So and then you, you come in and you say, yeah. And even we have like we have another Bluetooth based technology that actually using the new iBeacon that actually can be even precise locations. So inside this room you could geofence it so that it's it use, can use the iBeacon so that it's very precise and be able to geofence even at a much micro location level. <coughs> So, and then the ability to require VPNs when the application has to use a, a VPN to, uh, so that the, the enterprise can get visibility to all the activity that's going on inside that application. And around data uh, protection, we have like data encryption, copy paste prevention, jail jailbreak detection, and many others. You could also activate analytics so that you can see all the activities that are happening inside the, uh, inside the apps. And then based on the Active Directory, you can, you can assign this policy applies to this set of people, uh, this groups of people, the sales people, uh, uh, or whoever uh, uh, you want to apply that policy to. Then it's very simple. Once you've created a policy, all you do is you go on, you say you want to add an app. <coughs> now you could search the, directly the Google or uh, Apple App Store. So for example, you could come here and say Salesforce. and so you could, you could select the Salesforce touch application and select a policy that we've created before, like let's say for sales team, and you say add. Now what's going to happen is it's going to go connect, get the application, analyze it. So when it analyzes, it analyzes for the risk of the application. What kind of behaviors does this, does this application uh, have? And then it compares that against the risk that the enterprise says, this, this risk I don't, uh, this particular data I don't want to exfiltrate it, all of the risks, and then it scores it based on that and says this application has the following risks to the enterprise. If it allows it, then you're able to use it. So this process probably takes like you know, 30 seconds, let's see. Okay, so now it's finished uh, uh, wrapping it and analyzing it. Now you can see the risk, it's rated the application's risk as low, but it has some uh, uh, characteristics that uh, 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 can be considered threat around money and privacy. These are just uh, some, some uh, uh, API usages. Now, and then it gives you a complete analyzer report that tells you exactly what this application does and what kind of behaviors it has, what, what IP address it connects to, what APIs it uses what classes it has, every single <coughs> detail about the application and, and uh, you will be able to get a complete understanding around what this application is doing automatically. Then you could distribute it and the end user can use it in, from, uh, uh, from uh, his workspace. So now let me just switch into uh, an iPad and uh, uh, use as an end user. So when an end user comes in,
reset my reflector application. But the idea is, uh, and if anybody is interested, show, I, I, I can show them later. Basically, what happens is in, uh, there's a workspace. So I would log into that workspace, and it would show me what the apps that I have available that have been given. So in this case, Salesforce and the Salesforce uh, touch are available on the workspace. Now, the first time I come in and try to use this, it would prompt me to install it because it's not in my device. So it's like then I would say install. <coughs> now it would now it's installed it into uh, now it's going to install it on my uh, device. Now that application has been <coughs> secured and it has been wrapped and the enterprise has complete visibility and control around that application. So this particular application, for example, Salesforce application, I apply the copy paste prevention. So if I if I launch it and I try to even from the login screen if I try to Copy and paste. Let's say I select, I, I say select, copy, and then I go like let's say to my email <coughs> application and try to paste in here. It will not allow me, paste is not available because it just prevented me. Versus the regular Salesforce application, the employee would have been able to exfiltrate that data and copy and paste whatever it wants into, into other applications. So basically, all of those two million applications that are in the app store, <coughs> we're able to allow the enterprise to put control and security on them. And that's, uh, and that's it. Anybody has questions? Yes? Does it require work on jailbroken devices? No, it doesn't. Uh, so this, this is iOS 7. So uh, it doesn't require jailbreaking. In fact, we actually have, we detect jailbreaking. So the application, part of the fortification that the application has, is detects jailbreaking. And most MDM vendors, right now, can detect it when you first enroll. Ours is always. So if at any point the device is jailbroken, it immediately takes action. And let's say uh, 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 the action could be like, you know, to, to remote wipe the, the applications, not the device. So it would auto automatically be able to wipe uh, the data that's only enterprise data. What happens if the user installs Salesforce via the App Store? Yeah, the app store. So that's a great question. So our company, we have the ability to even pre-install applications or even what the user, so we can control that one as well. So basically, two things can happen. One is when he tries to use the, the one that, let's say if your policy says only use the one that I wrap with, the, with those different policies that I've wrapped, then it would prompt him to install the, the, the when he tries to launch the other application, it would say, you need to use the, the rough Salesforce and prompt them there. But the second part is, right now what we saw is the use case where the enterprise said, here's an application, use it. There's another use case where the enterprise, the, the, the business user says, I love this great app, I just found it, I want to use it for work. So he can come into the workspace, into his workspace, go into add applications. These are what he installed directly from the app store. And select, like for example, <coughs> Evernote. And the, fir the first thing that happens is it analyzes that, sends it, analyzes it, and then if the policy allows it, that goes into the workspace. Now, when the user tries to use Evernote here, the one that he downloaded from the App Store, all the policies are, will be applied. So when Evernote launches now, what happens is it's going to close Evernote, from to take you to the workspace, you need to authenticate, and then it, it takes you back to, uh, to Evernote. So, it doesn't matter where the application came from. If the application is on the device and the workspace is there, it actually can fortify and make sure that uh, all the security are in there. And this also applies to native applications. So you could also up, add up the security to the native applications like calendar, email, etc. User has multiple devices. Do you do it once per device, or can you do it once and it can propagate to all their devices? That's a good question. So when so when the user logs in on the other workspace. You would get the same kind of 
prompt as, as he gets here. So if the application is not installed, first thing is to authenticate. So it's like it would go make an authenticate. Then it would say, okay, this application is not installed, so install it now. But if it's only installed, it would it will so after it's I synchronize it. between all the Absolutely. Has a question? Yeah. What's the challenge right now? The challenge? Yeah. Well, I mean, one is obviously uh, from like you know, from you mean from technology or from business? No, from from expanding or growing rapidly. Well, <coughs> the challenge is again, it's like there are 160 vendors, and one way or another, like a lot of people think you know, Mokana can drop applications, any application. That's a theoretical uh, uh, way of dropping. They can't drop it from the app store. They can drop it if they have an agreement with Evernote and Evernote or Salesforce gives them. Those, those vendors will not give them the application. So, so there's a lot of noise in the market. So it's very difficult to articulate. But there's no other vendor that can do what we've done here. On iOS, none. So that, I mean, that, that would be helpful once the message goes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other question? Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you.